Cheers, I'm in England. Nope, I'm back in Montreal. It was a nice dream though. Hey, how are you? It's March 3rd, Monday. Monday, March 3rd. I hope you had a good weekend. Mine was excellent. On Friday night, Sophia and Aja were over and we had a play date, which is always fun. We talked and I we doodled. And I started um, my journal, my new doodling journal. I bought a Strathmore watercolor journal. It's an eight and a half by 11. It's very simple, but the pages are 140 pound weight and it's, it's so nice. I love it. I love, love, love the pages, love the feel of the watercolor. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to be doodling and if I want to add water, I might as well go for watercolor. And if I just want to uh, color with water-based markers, I'm, I can still do that. The only problem with this would be using Copic for coloring, but if I do, I would glue two pages together, which would be a waste, but you know, it's fun sometimes to just go against the rules. So, um, I have started a doodle, and I'm gonna show it to you really quickly, and no, I did not film because we were, you know, chatting and stuff, and we just wanted to, we laughed, <laughs> we let loose, and I don't like to shove a camera in my friend's face unless they specifically ask to. So, um, I drew, and it's another one of my fantasy or imaginary world where in this instance, uh, fruits grow like flowers. It, it didn't start like that. It was funny, the process with, the, with this was I didn't know what to do and I just started making circles. I was talking with them and I just made circles and Sophie's like, you're making a bunch of circles. And I go, yeah, that's, you know, sometimes it has to start that way. And it turns out that um, I was going to make a flower and then the circles kind of looked like grapes. They weren't exact circles. So then I went with, what if my flower was a grape flower? And then I made smaller circles and I said, what if? These flowers were blackberry flowers. It can happen. You never know. You never know what the future might hold. I swear I don't smoke anything. I'm, I don't drink. <laughs> um, so like I said, I did not film. I did not film the drawing, but I will show. And I started coloring with the Inktense pencils. <coughs> Excuse me, because I really wanted to test out the paper and oh how I love my intense pencils. Is it wrong to fall in love with supplies? It's so weird. When I talk to, I, most of my friends now are into mixed media and it's so funny that when we talk to each other we just go nuts over oh, did you see this new color or ooh you know and on Wednesday we had a golden paints representative a uh, working artist, they call them, uh, to come in and do a little crash course on the different medias. And she was using a whole bunch of different gels and uh, coarse pumice. And then we were mixing iridescent colors with um, gel and water and all that. It was just incredible. <laughs> she would do something or she would add a color and we go, oh, oh, you know, it's, anyways, I think it's a disease, but it's a nice disease and I'm okay with it. So you're not going to see the drawing portion, but I will add some more doodle to this page. What I'm going to film right now is me finishing the coloring and adding the accents and I will do a voiceover. It will be sped up, but not as much as usual. So I do apologize if this video is longer than usual. And if you uh, don't want to watch the tutorial and just uh, see the finishing page or the finished page, then you can just head on over to the end where the photos are. And right now I'm going to go to my working table and I'm going to get down to playing. Okay, so as I've explained in the intro, the drawing's already done and I've already started coloring with the ink tense pencils. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on going and right now you're seeing me going over the orange butterfly. I did not agree with the color of the butterfly and truthfully, 
I was a little stuck with the color palette. So what I did was I went on designseeds.com. Uh, they have great color samples and palettes and combinations. So I've researched uh, for one of the main colors that I have, and it gave me a nice combination. So I'm going with that. So I'm moving on to the background now, and whenever I do back backgrounds uh, with watercolor, I like to apply the water first to the surface, and then I pick up the color from the ink tents, and um, it naturally follows the water onto the paper. It just it just drops onto the paper, and that gives me a nice even. Um, coloring I don't want to say too even because it's still water coloring and it should be um, patchy at best but I didn't want to have the lines that sometimes the pencil will leave on paper so I'm just going randomly here and I'm applying the uh, turquoise color and by the way I'll list all of the ink tense pencil numbers that I'm using in my blog post so you can uh, check my blog for this And you'll see also that I'm not going very evenly, meaning that I like to leave lighter areas, also some of the white as well. I don't cover the whole surface. I think it just adds to the whimsical um, characteristics of the doodling. Now I'm switching to kind of like a, an olive green uh, ink tense, and I'm going into the turquoise that I've already uh, laid down. The water brush that I'm using is the large one. These two water brushes that I'm using for this uh, particular doodling is by Tim Holtz. Um, and there's a small tip brush and a larger flat brush which is the one that I'm using right now. And I love it for background. It's perfect. It covers um, a lot but it's still precise because it's flat. And you'll have to excuse me, I lost some of that footage there. As you can see, I've applied that uh, olive green towards the bottom right-hand corner. And now I'm going with lighter green just to create more interest. I thought that the olive green was too dull. Um, now that the page has had time to dry, I'm adding kind of like a violet blue in some areas. And that will make the green pop. Um, when you're using similar colors, it's good to have a good contrast. And you'll find that by doing that, the, the colors uh, will come to life. They're just adding as a contrast against each other and they're now all of a sudden they become alive. So I'm going to add that color here and there and uh, obviously I'm gearing up to do the top corner. And you see me uh, dipping my brush <laughs> off camera. Um, this water brush, obviously, um, you can add water into it. But when I have a large surface and I don't want to be bothered by uh, reloading the brush with water, I use um, a little container on my desk filled up with water. And the water's clean, obviously. And that way I can move around the page. I can cover the whole page if I want to. And I don't have to reload the brush with more water inside. Now I'm going to move on to the top scallop border and I'm adding lime green to those uh, little circles or bubbles. <laughs> and I'm using obviously the finer tipped brush for this. And I was um, <laughs> The page was still wet so my arm was hitting all the wet spots and I was carrying the color all over so I'm drying it with the heat tool but normally when I do water coloring I like to let the water um, dry naturally 
because sometimes with the heat tool you move the water where you don't want it to go and I, I love to have that organic feeling of letting the water do its job and um, letting the the um, watercolor settling where it should or where it wants to go naturally if that makes any sense Another thing that I like to do, and this I learned also from Kathy Bluto, is to add blue to the green on the stems and the leaves. Um, again, it makes the colors pop. All of a sudden, it's not just that dull green. I mean, it's not dull, but it's just one color, even though I added a darker green to the leaves when I did some of the shading by adding the blue. Um, the colors all of a sudden become even more vibrant. So it's a nice trick that um, that I was taught and I like to use it because it, it really is true. It totally works. And these are all small details that um, that you sort of improve on as you go along or you find out. And um, Really a doodling is endless. You can add um, until your heart's content um, to me, a doodling is never finished. You just have to quit it. <laughs> so now I'm going back to the butterfly. I wanted to add a little touch of bling to the page, but in retrospect, I kind of regret it, but it's there and, you know, I have to live with it. The butterfly turned out to be too red for my taste, uh, although I was adding a wink of Stella brush in the pink, uh, it looked red. And I'm also going to do the spots on the uh, ladybug with the black wink of Stella. And now I'm going back to the border and you'll see me do this often. I jump from one place to another, especially with watercolor. Um, when you work in an area and it's too wet, it's nice to move away from it and do something else. And it also breaks the monotony of, you know, staying in the same area all the time. That's the beauty of doodling. You can just go at random then you end up with a finishing or a finished piece eventually. So now I'm using the um, Big Brush Pit Artist Pen in black to do the stripes for the border. And for the white stripes, I'm using this new pen that I just bought. It's called Pen Touch by Sakura. It's opaque but not as much as the Signo Uniball pen. I'm forever in the search for the perfect white pen. The Signo Uniball, like I said, is totally opaque, but all of the ones that I've had so far, they ended up um, clogging up on me, not being uh, usable anymore. They were okay when they were new, but um, as time goes on, it's either the ink is dried up really quickly or they miss. So, like I said, I'm trying this one. It's all right. It's not the perfect one. I'm adding some touches of white as well on the fruits. And... Uh, on the butterfly and wherever I think the light would hit the graves and as you can see here it's not totally opaque on the colors which is why I'm quite disappointed with the pen but uh, I made it work I went over a few times in some areas so I'm moving on to the border now and I'm using the same method as I've used for the background so using the flat brush, I'm picking up the color directly from the pencil. And I'm going to use a mix of a purplish red. It's not totally purple. It's got um, hints of red in there. So this will be my first color.
and I'm not applying the colors even the color evenly I like that um, patchy feel to it it's watercolor and I like that it's one of the characteristics that I like the best about the watercoloring and now I'm adding uh, magenta just to tie in with the colors of the fruits this is so much fun to do doodling is probably the one uh, form of artwork that I immediately fell in love with I love art journaling I love mixed media playing with paints but it took me a while to get into it whereas doodling the first time that I've done it or that someone showed me properly um, I absolutely fell in love with it alright so here's a funny story this is a makeup eyeliner pen by Stella and <laughs> recently I've had an eye infection and I've had to replace most of my makeup I didn't want to throw this pen away I paid good money for it and it was almost brand new it's a liquid eyeliner so I figured maybe I can use it on something well I decided to use it on this doodle to create these little notches on the frame and it totally worked I love it um, I'm sure it's not acid free or maybe it should be because it goes on the eye but um, I'll see how I'll see if it fades or um, if it sticks to the page after 10 years <laughs> if I still have the book but it worked out perfectly it's kind of like a, a very flexible and very thin brush tip which is perfect for that so I'm just doing it randomly I'm not doing the whole border but it was a lot of fun to play with so I'm definitely going to use that pen or that pencil again <laughs> sorry if I'm off camera here and I think I'm done I'm gonna give you a close-up of all the different areas and as you can see I went over the lines sort of everywhere and I love that um, doodling is the perfect um, form of expression that f forgives and to me the more you go out of the lines the less even your coloring is it just adds to the doodling character now this was my second voiceover that I've ever done and I hope it was okay I hope the sound is not too bad for you and also let me know if the speed uh, is fine and oops I forgot to sign <laughs> always sign your artwork there now we're done so I hope that was fun I hope that the voiceover is okay I do not have the budget right now to buy a new a microphone for my computer and the one that I bought for my camera somehow does not work with the computer so it's either I make that work I might go to Lozo uh, next weekend and, and talk to the uh, technicians over there to see if I can use the same microphones because that would be great maybe it's just a matter of uploading a software on my computer so I hope that's the case and uh, but I kind of had my mouth to the laptop <laughs> So I hope it wasn't too low or too tinny, but um, let me know how you like it. And um, that's it. I will probably be back midweek. I intend to finish the lady with the flowing hair that I showed you last week, I believe. And whatever may happen in the in-between. Oh, before I uh, go, I want to show you this canvas that I did for... Uh, Friday's tutorial for the store and uh, this is what I call my faux chalkboard technique it's essentially black gesso on a natural canvas this one was not treated so I used black gesso because I wanted to use the ink tents 
uh, over fiber paste. Oh, another ooh. <laughs> so um, this is very dimensional and I will add the photos at the end so that you guys can see. And if you want to see the full tutorial, you can uh, click on Scrapbook Central's uh, YouTube channel to see it. But um, I love how it turned out. And the little girl here is a Julie Nutting stamp by Prima, uh, one of her newest release. And the girl usually is. Well, hang on. So the girl's originally like that. Oop, reflection. Sorry about that, guys. See at the bottom here? Um, but I wanted her to be sitting on the leaf. Can you see this properly? I hope you can. Okay. So I wanted her to be sitting on the leaf. So I cut her up. <laughs> I cut her body. I just, I cut, like, this part here is higher than the rest. And I made her legs to cross. And, um... What I did is I, I didn't have I glued it with extra heavy gel so that the 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 bottom of her dress would be way higher than the rest of her body to make it look as if you know the dress is just to give it more perspective. Trust me, it works. <laughs> and um, I like it. I like it. I was I had a hard time with uh, the border, but I made it work. And I love 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 this blue here that you see is the metallic gelato so ooh, yummy when you spray it with water and it falls onto the black the reflection is out of this world and the metallic particles they dance with the water and it's just so yummy and so fun to do so i um, suggest that you go on over uh, to scrapbook central to check it out and i will see you on wednesday my friends i hope you have a good beginning of the week and if you have any questions or comments as usual, leave them below and I will see you later. Bye!